Hi, and welcome to Enchantment of Eternity's Top 10 Star Trek Movies. So this video is where I rate the 10 Star Trek movies in order from my least favorite to my favorite. It should be noted that I am not including the Star Trek reboots in this Top 10. Uh, without making a judgment call on their quality, I just simply feel that the reboots aren't really Star Trek and are a separate thing and shouldn't be compared to what is true Star Trek canon. Again, that doesn't necessarily mean I hate them, it just means I feel it belongs to a separate collection of stories, not this one. I know many had said the same thing about like Deep Space Nine, Voyager, and Enterprise, but I strongly disagree. I feel all five Star Trek television series and their movie spinoffs all belong to the same Star Trek universe and all have the feel of Star Trek, even those that are subpar in terms of quality like Enterprise. Whereas I always looked on the reboots uh, the way I would look on a cover band of a or a very loose adaptation. In terms, it was loosely inspired by and pays homage to track, but really is his own thing. Anyway, that's the way I feel about it. I feel very strongly about it, so if that's a problem, too bad, this is my video. However, I will eventually be doing a video devoted just for the Star Trek reboots, so uh, if you really want to hear me talk about them, hang on for that. So, we'll start with my number 10 Star Trek movie, which is my least favorite Star Trek movie, and that is The Final Frontier. Oh my god, what an ever-loving piece of crap. You like what I did there with God? Never mind. I've heard some complaints that uh, this was more like an episode than a movie, but I'll go a step further to say if it it was a very bad episode. If this had been an episode, it would it would have been one of my least favorite. This film just throws all established logic out the window with the main villain being a Klingon that acts more like a 12-year-old schoolyard bully than a Klingon warrior. And introducing Spock's half-brother as someone who brainwashes people with mind mails is just plain silly. It was obviously uh, throughout the film that they were just trying real hard to recapture the magic of the last three Star Trek films and failing miserably. The whole film was riding off the coattails of the Voyage Home success. They didn't even try to make a decent movie. So my rating out of 10 for The Final Frontier is a 1 the worst. Coming in at number 9 is the motion picture. If you watch any making of featurette for this film, it really explains, uh, you know, and it makes sense why this movie ended up being such a mess. Star Trek was originally meant to come back in the 70s as another TV show, but because of the success of Star Wars, the studio decided to do it as a movie instead, and it was insanely rushed to meet some uh, release date that came far too soon. The script was very loosely based off the script for the pilot episode of the abandoned TV series project, and they started filming before the uh, script uh, even had an ending. Actors recall that they were pitching endings to the producers while they were filming. Furthermore, it's evident to me that the studio wanted to make a Star Wars film, Gene Roddenberry wanted to make a Star Trek film, and a director wanted to make a 2001 a Space Odyssey type film. And the ending result is a mismatch, giant mess of a film. Uh, this, you know, It's all fluff and scenery with no story. The story of this film could fit into a 45 minute episode. It was just over bloated with long, drawn out psychedelic sequences meant to look visually interesting, but did nothing to add to the story. The film was too boring to appeal to Star Wars fans that lacked the intellect and heart to appeal to Star Trek fans, and its mismatch of themes and stories uh, made it not appeal to 2001 fans. So in the end, it's just an overbloated, boring movie with an interesting story at the heart of it that could have been told in like 45 minutes. And overall, it's a cautionary tale to film studios of what happens when you try to rush a film that really needs more time in order to do it justice. So my rating for the motion picture is a three, very poor. Number eight is Insurrection. Uh, this film was probably the next generation film that was most coherent and had a good narrative structure and told a consistent story. The problem is the story is not at all interesting. 
Uh, they didn't seem to be any justification for making this film other than they felt like it was time for another next generation movie so they just came up with some random idea so they could just do that. If ever there was a Star Trek movie that would have been better off as an episode, it was this one. Nothing about the story screamed cinematic, except for a few needless action sequences which were obviously tacked on in a failed attempt to make it appear more cinematic. There were good strong themes of Picard sticking up for what he thought was right regardless of the consequences, which has always been good uh, and one of uh, the next generation's strengths, but it was hidden under a lot of un necessary fluff that just slowed the movie down and a lot of forced humor and action that just came off as fake. So my rating for Insurrection is a 6 good. Number 7 is First Contact. This is one of the most popular Star Trek films, but I personally feel it gets a little more praise than it deserves. I too was captivated by its action sequences with the Borg, the space battles uh, were pretty intense and awesome, and the sequences uh, with the Borg running around like zombies was scary as hell. An overall uh, character story arc of Picard having to confront his anger and need for revenge was awesome. The scene where he gives the classic, the line must be drawn here, speech uh, was was one of the most epic moments in all of Star Trek and one of Patrick Stewart's best performances. But let's be honest here, the story is a bit of a mess. First of all, the story is extremely rushed. Uh, there's no preamble, no time to get to know the characters, no setup or expansion uh, of the situation. It's just boom, within two minutes the Borg are attacking and then the film is just lush with gaping plot holes like how Worf was in charge of Cisco's Defiant with none of the DS9 crew there and more importantly why the Borg bothered with some convoluted plot to stop first contact when you know when they were in the past all they could do is easily assimilate earth uh and with no meaningful resistance so at that point what does it matter whether or not first contact happens and i said this several times before if the borg want to conquer earth so badly all they have to do is send more than one ship next time easy peasy and the whole concept of the Borg Queen seemed like an artificial way to create a singular face of the villain uh, the Star Trek movies have to have. And her need for a counterpart was also extremely convoluted and did not fit into established lore. And the whole subplot with uh, Cochrane on the planet was just a waste of time. I, I think I remember hearing somewhere that they couldn't decide whether or not to do a funny time travel movie or an action-packed Borg movie. So they just decided to do them both. And I don't think they mesh at all and it just comes off as disjointed and it was trying to do too many things at once. And some of these action scenes, uh, such as Picard shooting a machine gun in the holodeck and the Zero-G fight on the deflector disc served absolutely no purpose for the overall plot and was just there to look cool. So in the end, this film is nothing but a string of cool-looking action sequences mixed with a few comic relief scenes strung together and it lacks anything resembling character development or cohesive plot. But that being said, I like some of these action sequences and they're done very well as well as Picard's overarching story. So my rating for First Contact is a 7. Very good. On to my number 6, which is Generations. Generations was another film that was rushed to make too early of a release date. My understanding was they were working on this film while The Next Generation was still airing and thus didn't have much time to prepare. However, in my opinion, it didn't suffer nearly as much as the motion picture did. Even writer Ronald D. Moore said he wasn't really happy with uh, what he did with it and thought they could have came up with something better had they had more time. That being said, said um I thought there were a lot of really great moments in this film. The underlining theme of racing against time and time being an enemy that and it was a really good one. And we had some amazing Picard moments in this film as he dealt with loss trying to outwit uh, Sauron and dealing with his inner demons and the Nexus. Uh, the side plot with Data getting emotions also worked really well for the film. The action sequences were believable and enhanced the overall story. The problem came in is when they tried to integrate Kirk's storyline and Picard's storyline. It just felt incredibly forced. There was a lot of 
telling, not showing, and it felt really rushed and not at all believable. I kind of feel like this film would have been better off uh, had the Kirk storyline been left out entirely, and it was just more of a marketing gimmick to have Kirk involved, and clearly they decided he would be in the film before coming up with the story for it, and the story should have come first. So my rating for Generations is a 7. Very good. Number five is The Undiscovered Country. This film was a very solid espionage film that had a great character story about Kirk having to overcome his personal prejudices and the name of peace. However, this film tried to present a particularly dark tone with the score and the cinematography, and I'm not sure that what it was, it just didn't fit and it felt a bit out of place. Plus, I hate to say it, but the original crew were far too old at this point. I know they tried to excuse it by saying they were just about to retire, but uh, it just seems weird that the whole crew were that old and that there were two captains and four commanders on the bridge. It just seemed a bit odd. Plus, it really irritated me that they were presenting it like a huge mystery on who it could possibly be behind the conspiracy when the movie made it pay painfully obvious that it was Christopher Plummer's character. I mean, they even marketed him as the main villain. It was like, oh gee, I wonder who could possibly be behind the conspiracy. <laughs> That being said, there was a lot about this film that did work. The overarching theme that peace should be the ultimate goal was a really good one, and it was accomplished very well, and it featured some really suspenseful moments like Kirk and McCoy being wrongfully arrested and the escape from the icy prison, and the ending battle sequence was really effective and tense as hell. So overall, a really solid film, but not a particularly unique or memorable one. So my rating for The Undiscovered Country is an 8 extremely good. Number 4 is Star Trek Nemesis. I know this movie is not very well liked, but I always loved this movie. This movie suffered from a few obvious and glaring flaws, so let me get those out of the way first. First of all, this film came out in a time where Star Trek was failing in popularity, so the producers were trying too hard to attract mainstream audiences, and you could really tell uh, there were a couple of needless action sequences like the Jeep chase scene on the planet that was particularly cringeworthy. And having a Riker and Troy sex scene and having Troy being psychically violate it. Nobody wants to see that shit. And worst of all, uh, it's the very poorly executed death of Data that was an obvious attempt to recapture some of the magic of the Wrath of Khan uh, that just failed miserably. It was uh, such a subpar ending to one of the most beloved characters in all of track. But now, that's out of the way. Let me focus on the film's positives, which in my opinion are huge. First and foremost, you can tell this film was written by a fan, as this is the only Next Generation film to truly capture uh, the family type of relationship the senior officers had and that was established on the TV series. It was great to finally see Riker and Troy married, and then you had two uh, plots of Picard and Data faced with dark mirror images of themselves and thus having to confront their and their demons. Uh, and then most of all, you have Tom Hardy's amazing performance as Shinzon. If what they were attempting to do here was to create a villain as good as Khan, I think they succeeded as this guy was creepy as hell and uh, it was so cool that he served as the anti-Picard as uh, what Picard would have grown up to be if he had a fucked up childhood. And the battle of wits with Picard uh, and Shinzon was just amazing. To see Patrick Stewart have these intense scenes with Tom Hardy only made this film much more spectacular. Uh, but if that wasn't enough, the film, in my opinion, features the greatest space battle in all of Star Trek. I mean, Picard is at his best when he's using his wits to outsmart someone, and here he's clearly outmatched and is face facing certain defeat, so he does a bold-ass move and just rams the other ship. Uh, that was just so amazing to see, and it gives me goosebumps every time I watch it. So my rating for Nemesis would be a 10, and this would be towards the top of my list, but because of the glaring flaws I mentioned, it holds it back to an 8. Extremely good. Number 3 is The Voyage Home. 
The Voyage Home was the original series Star Trek movie that did the best at the box office and surely was a factor in why The Next Generation got greenlit for TV. The Voyage Home was uh, very successfully blends comedy uh, and with true to form Star Trek characters and a fish out of water story as the Trek crew we know and love travels to 1986 and has uh, trouble blending in to the culture. I mean this film features uh, some classic comedy moments such as Scotty picking up the mouse and using it to try to talk to the computer, Spock acting like a weirdo in modern day San Francisco, and Kirk's uh, I think he did a little too much LDS line along with many other classic lines. I mean this film regardless of being Star Trek is a classic 1980s comedy comedy up there with films like Ghostbusters and Back to the Future. And on top of that, it featured a classic track plot about the crew trying to bring whales back to the future to stop destruction of Earth. And it was very nicely tied up loose plot lines from the previous two films turning Star Trek 2 II through 4 into a nice little trilogy. However, there were some obvious plot holes about the probe and the whales, but I tend to give it a bit more leeway because it's a comedy. But it does hold it back for me a little bit in being a perfect film as uh, at times the comedy is prioritized over plot. So my rating for The Voyage Home is a 9 excellent. Number 2 is The Search for Spock. Now some may see this movie as an obvious ploy to resurrect a beloved character Spock so they could continue having Litter Nimoy in the franchise and in some ways it is but it was so well done. Uh, by having Kirk obsess over the loss of his friend and to find out there's a slim chance of bringing his friend back to life but not being believed so he has to resort to becoming an outlaw and throwing his career away in order to save Spock. It was just such an exciting and emotional way to do it. Honestly, I don't think there's ever been a resurrection of a character done in film or television that was executed as well as it was here. In this film uh, that first put the Klingons back on the map and established them with the appearance, behavior, and language that became the norm in future track material. Having Christopher Lloyd play the main villain was awesome. Yes, he was a bit two-dimensional, but it's Christopher Lloyd. Come on. Plus, I think the villain portrayed how those who have been adversaries for so long can be extremely distrustful of their counterparts. Plus, you got a few great one-liners such as Kirk's, I have had enough of you! And the, you Klingon bastard, you killed my son! I mean, it's a bit campy, but it's still fun and totally awesome. Also, this film was packed with iconic moments such as Kirk stealing the Enterprise and then destroying the Enterprise in order to kill the Klingons trying to take it over, and then the tragic loss of uh, Kirk's son. All these moments uh, were played excellently and showed the emotional cost on Kirk's and the length he'd go to in order to save his comrade's life. So my rating for The Search for Spock is a 10 the best. And my number one favorite Star Trek movie is The Wrath of Khan. This is the classic Trek movie and generally recognized as uh, such for very good reason. This was a very tense uh, spaceship uh, submarine-like cat and mouse game that the original series episode The Balance of Terror was, but this far exceeded that. Uh, bringing back a villain who appeared in one episode of the original series, an episode which I personally feel was a bit overrated because of this film, but that's just me. But the villain worked so well for this film as Khan was, you know, had super strength and super intellect making him nearly unbeatable. It was so great to see Kirk at his lowest and almost defeated, but then using his wits to exploit Khan's greatest weakness, his lust for revenge. This was a tense and extremely suspenseful chase movie that was filled with great moments that really played to Trek's strength and highlighted the best of the already beloved characters. But what really made this film great was the powerfully emotional ending as Spock sacrificed himself to save the entire crew that was so well executed. I do believe it was the best death of a beloved character ever portrayed on, on screen. Everything about this movie was just executed so well and got the viewer involved and sucked into the film and played on what made Trek so great, making it my number one favorite Star Trek movie. 
So my rating for The Wrath of Khan, of course, is a 10 the best. So that's it for my top 10 Star Trek movies. Be sure to check out my channel for many other Star Trek videos. Uh, at the moment, I'm doing a series of reviews where I review episodes from any of the star, uh, five Star Trek television series as requested by my viewers. So if there's an episode you'd like me to review, just make a comment below with the name of the episode you'd like me to review and I'll endeavor to do so. And make sure you subscribe so you can keep up with all that. And thanks a lot for watching. Yeah. <laughs>